This video explores other comprehensive income. It's important to realize that other comprehensive income is not really a concept that you'll find in the framework. It's more an arbitrary distinction between different types of income made at a standards level. There is no concept you will have to consider each standard for this. To explain other comprehensive income, we're going to look at the instance of a revaluation surplus and deficit. Let's consider the following simple example. An entity has issued share capital for 10,000 Rand. This share capital was then issued in exchange for an item of property, plant and equipment. As you will see flowing through from this journal entry, you now have share capital in your statement of changes in equity issued in the first reporting period. The 1,000 Rand property, plants and equipment is evidenced in the note for property, plants and equipment as an addition, which then also links through to your statement of financial position. As the issuing of share capital is a transaction with the equity participants or shareholders, you will see that this transaction has no effect on the statement of other comprehensive income. The issuing of share capital is excluded from the definition of income. At the end of the first reporting period, this item of property, plant and equipment now needs to be depreciated. The journal being debit depreciation, if we assume a 10 year straight line, will be 1000 Rand. The accumulated depreciation, 1000 Rand. Flowing through from this journal entry, you will see the effect of the depreciation expense on the statement of profit or loss. This effect then flows through to the statement of changes in equity as is evident by the profit for the year in the retained earnings line item. Again, this then flows through to your statement of financial position, affecting the retained earnings line item. The accumulated depreciation is then reflected in the note to property, plant and equipment. This reduces your initial costs to a new carrying amount of 9,000 Rand, which is then reflected in your statement of financial position. Moving into the second year now, let's consider that there was a revaluation of this item of property, plant and equipment, and that this item is now needs to be revalued to 13,500 Rand. Before doing the revaluation, we need to do the journal to reverse the accumulated depreciation to the cost. The accumulated depreciation balance reflecting year 1's depreciation is now 1000 Rand. This will therefore be the amount that we need to reverse in the journal. Our journal entry then reflects the accumulated depreciation being debited, decreasing it and transferring it to the cost of that item of property, plants and equipment. The effect of this journal entry is now evident in the second year's note for property, plants and equipment. You can now see that this item is carried at its carrying amount of 9,000 Rand and there is no longer a balance in the accumulated depreciation account. Our asset now being at the carrying amount of 9,000 Rand can now be revalued to the 13,500 net replacement value. This is done again with the journal entry, taking the 9,000 up by 4,500 to the 13,000. The increased value being a debit is now seen in the note to the property, plants and equipment as a 4,500 revaluation, increasing the carrying amount now to the net replacement value of 13,500. The other side of this journal entry to revaluation surplus is now recorded as other comprehensive income and is disclosed near the bottom of the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. This 4,500 Rand then flows through from our statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income to be seen in our statement of changes in equity in the revaluation surplus column. 
The revaluation surplus column then carries through to our statement of financial position. Moving to the end of this reporting period, we now have a new carrying amount and depreciable amount that needs to be depreciated over the remaining useful life. As we initially said, the remaining life would be 10 years at the initial acquisition of this asset, there is now 9 years left. So your 13,500 needs to be depreciated over 9 years. In our journal for depreciation, you therefore now have a depreciation expense of 1,500. Again, you can trace this journal through to your statement of profit and loss and also to your property, plants and equipment note. What's important to note at this stage now is your total accumulated depreciation disclosed on that asset. Because your opening balance of accumulated depreciation was reversed at revaluation, the balance at the end of the period is now only depreciation for this reporting period. Another decision that the entity needs to make at the end of this reporting period is as far as the realisation of the revaluation surplus is concerned. Currently we are sitting with a balance of 4500 Will the entity realise this when the asset is disposed of at the end of its useful life, or will we realise this through use of the asset? Assuming that we select to realise this asset with use, we will need to do an entry now at the end of year 2. To calculate the amount for this journal entry, you will need to consider the change in your depreciation that has resulted because of your revaluation. In year 1, you had a 1,000 Rand depreciation. In year 2, following the revaluation, you now have a 1,500 Rand depreciation. The realisation of your balance for revaluation surplus, currently 4,500, will therefore be the 500 Rand, the difference between the two periods' depreciation expenses. The revaluation surplus is now debited to diminish the balance and this is transferred to retained earnings. This journal entry affects the statement of changes in equity directly by passing the statement of profit or loss or other comprehensive income. In the statement of changes in equity you will see that the revaluation surplus column now has been decreased by 500 Rand and the retained earnings column increased by 500 Rand, being the realisation for this period. You may be wondering why this is not considered a movement in other comprehensive income. Well, as we said to start this video, there is no concepts underlying other comprehensive income, and this is a rule that has been made at the standard level of IS 16. Let's now move into the third reporting period. If we look in our note to property, plants and equipment, the asset at the beginning of this reporting period is currently carried at 12,000 Rand. This is made up of the revalued amount of 13.5, less the depreciation for year 2 of 1.5. Let us now assume that that carrying amount needs to be diminished now to 7,000 Rand with a downwards revaluation. Now being a revaluation event again, regardless of whether it's up or down, we need to eliminate the accumulated depreciation at the point of revaluation. In this instance, now we have accumulated depreciation at the date of revaluation of 1,500 Rand that needs to be eliminated in our journal. Accordingly, our accumulated depreciation is debited and transferred to the revalued amount, previously the cost account, of property, plants and equipment. The effect of this journal is again evident in the note to the property, plants and equipment. You will now see that your carrying amount at the end of this reporting period is currently reflecting a carrying amount of 12,000 Rand and no longer reflecting any accumulated depreciation. You now need to decrease this carrying amount from 12,000 Rand down to 7,000 Rand. This requires a journal entry of 5,000 Rand.
The effects of this created part of our journal entry is now visible in the node to property plants and equipment, and you will see that it is decreasing the carrying amount from the 12,000 to the 7,000 required. The question now arises as to what should be the corresponding entries in equity. To decide on your debit entries, draw yourself a timeline just to show yourself what has happened with the revaluation surplus account to date. You initially started with an increase of 4,500 Rand, and then there was a slight decrease with the realization of 500, leaving you now with a balance of 4,000 Rand in the revaluation surplus account. Of the 5,000 Rand that we are dropping the carrying amount of the property, plants and equipment, 4,000 Rand can therefore be realized against the revaluation surplus account. You will now note that the balance of the revaluation surplus account is zero, so we cannot take anything more to this equity account. The difference there of 4 of 1,000 Rand now needs to be journalized. This is now reflected in your Statement of Profit and Loss or Other Comprehensive Income in the light item, Other Expenses. You have now fully accounted for the decrease in the value of property, plants and equipment. You have on the credit side an amount of 5,000 Rand decreasing your property, plants and equipment. And on the debit side, you have erased your revaluation surplus by 4,000 and the additional 1,000 Rand put through profit and loss. While the decrease of 1,000 Rand is seen in profit and loss, the 4,000 Rand is regarded as an other comprehensive income movement, although it is negative. So it will be recorded in your statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. This will then flow through to decreasing your revaluation surplus balance to zero. Again, the zero balance is now evident in your statement of financial position. We now proceed to the end of the reporting period for year 3, and depreciation will again need to be provided for. The carrying amount of your asset at this point in time is in your books at 7,000 Rand. There is now 8 years remaining in the asset's useful life, so you will need to depreciate that 7,000 over the 8 years. That will give you an amount of 875 Rand. Depreciation is debited with the 875 and accumulated depreciation credited with 875. The effect thereof again evident in the 875 is in other expenses increasing the previous 1000 Rand from the revaluation deficit. And then the 875 to accumulate a depreciation is now seen in your property, plants and equipment notes and represents the balance at the end of the period as all previous balances have been eliminated with the revaluation at the beginning of that reporting period. The property, plants and equipment balance is now evident in the Statement of Financial Position, while the contra entries now move through from the Statement of Profit and Loss and Other Comprehensive Income to Retained Earnings, there is the adjustment that we had on the revaluation surplus. These balances for share capital, for retained earnings and for revaluation surplus then carrying through to year 3 in my Statement of Financial Position.